this is the pelvis, and the pelvis consists of four bones, the left and right ossocox, the sacrum, and the coccyx. This is the ossocox, and when we refer to the pelvic girdle, we just re are referring to the left and right ossocox. So the ossocox consists of three bones that are fused together, and they all meet in the middle of this deep depression, which is where the femur articulates, and it is called the acetabulum. And we can see the acetabulum on our pelvis here. The three bones are the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. Now we're going to point out some markings. The superior border is called the crest of the iliac. And when you put your hands on your hips, you're putting your hands on the crest of the iliac. So remember that this is the anterior and this is the posterior. Here we have the anterior superior iliac spine, and then just beneath it we have the anterior inferior iliac spine. At the posterior, we have the posterior superior iliac spine and the posterior inferior iliac spine. This notch here is called the greater sciatic notch, which is useful in identifying the sex that the bone came from. And the lesser sciatic notch is here. In between the two, we have the ischial spine. And the ischial spine is also useful for the determining sex of the bone. This tuberosity here is called the ischial tuberosity. And this is where the hamstring muscles originate from. This large foramen here, which can be seen on the pelvis here, is called the obturator foramen. On the pubic bone, we have the body of the pubis. And then this projection here that sticks out at a different angle is called the ramus. Where the two pubic bones meet, we have the pubic symphysis, and the angle beneath the two pubic bones is called the subpubic angle. Taking a view of the inside, this portion here is called the iliac fossa. It's a shallow depression. And we can also see where the ilium articulates with the sacrum at the iliosacral joint. This is the right femur. Here we have the head of the femur that articulates with the acetabulum of the ossicox. This portion is the neck. This large protuberance here is the greater trochanter, and running towards the lesser trochanter on the anterior, we have the intertrochantal line. At the distal portion, we have the medial condyle and the lateral condyle, and then upon the condyle, we have the epicondyles. So this is the medial epicondyle, and this is the lateral epicondyle. Between the two condyles, we have the intercondylar fossa. Now, we'll turn it over for a posterior view. Here, we can see the lesser trochanter. And running from the greater trochanter to the lesser trochanter, we have the intertrochantal crest. Here we have the gluteal tuberosity, and running down the posterior of the shaft, we have the linear aspira. We can also see our medial and lateral condyles and the 
intercondylar fossa. This is the patella. We'll move these bones out of the way. So the flat part on the superior part is called the base, and then the point is the apex. This is a right tibia and fibula. This is the proximal end that articulates with the femur, and this is the distal end that articulates with the talus. On the anterior, at the proximal end, we have the tibial tuberosity, and this is where the patellar ligament inserts. Running down the anterior aspect, we have the anterior crest. And then at the distal end, we have the medial malleolus. Turning it over to get a posterior view. We have our condyles, our medial condyle and our lateral condyle. And between the two condyles, we have the intercondylar eminence. Then on each side, we have the epicondyles, the medial epicondyle and the lateral epicondyle. Our fibula, we have the head of the fibula. And on the distal end, we have the lateral malleolus. Might as well jump! Oh.